Good morning, everybody. This is going to be part two of the closed loop idle tuning uh, video series. And today, uh, we're actually going to walk through and dissect the information from one of the data logs from part one. And the one we're going to look at is for timing. So we had locked the valve at a set position, 61.5%. Um, and then we swept the timing from 8 degrees to 28 degrees. And the significance of this is to see how timing steps affect not only the RPM curve, but also how they affect the manifold pressure. And we can see that, you know, we're pulling terrible map here at, at uh, 8 degrees of timing, which is not surprising. But the manifold pressure start, drops uh, as a linear line until about uh, 22 degrees, and then the manifold pressure stops dropping linearly and, and sort of levels out. And we can see if we draw a line straight up and down from there, the RPM was gaining as a linear line, and then it, it stops gaining as we increase RPM. And that's about our cutoff point. So we're going to find, we want to uh, set the idle, the, the ignition table at idle at a point somewhere in between here. Uh, this way, our uh, idle advance can uh, remove and add timing to help stabilize the idle speed. And that's that's the goal is to to find the the best uh, idle timing amount uh, that fits our needs. Now, you know, typically some guys will say, okay, we've got to change the valve position. And, and once a valve position has been changed, then we sweep the timing again and we do this over and over and over again until we find the uh, valve position and timing amount that nets us uh, the best vacuum uh, at the RPM that we desire, and that's perfectly fine. There's nothing wrong with that if we're setting up the idle in open loop. That's no issue. Um, and that's fine if your car doesn't have idle valve or, you know, doesn't have some kind of uh, means of controlling or stabilizing the idle. But if we have a, uh, especially a PWM idle valve, we're going to do it this way. So obviously we've got in red here our spark advance ignition steps. We have it in two degree increments and I gave it around uh, a six second uh, space before I increased the timing again. And we can see that the timing went from around, you know, bare bottom between 800. The car was not happy here. And then it started slowly climbing at about 50 RPM increments. Each time we step the timing up until we reached around 22 degrees. 22 is our roof. We can see at 24 degrees, we stop gaining RPM and we stop uh, increasing the amount of vacuum that we have. Now, don't get me wrong, we can go all the way to 28 degrees here in the you know, it jumped from 26 to 28, netted us another 50 RPM, and now we're pulling vacuum again. But 28 degrees at idle is not really acceptable. We don't want to go, we don't want to overtime the engine at idle. If something like this, I, I would consider this overtimed. And, uh, you know, this is kind of a trick that a lot of guys would use on old school carbureted engines. They'd lock the distributor out at whatever uh, ignition advance they wanted out of the drag strip. So let's look at this information uh, in a few different ways. So I run Megalog Viewer HD, so I've got scatter plots and histograms, and I've already created a few scatter plots for the information. And this one's nice. Here on the left, it shows us RPM uh, versus manifold pressure. And then down the middle here, the Z axis we can see the spark advance from blue to red from 8 degrees to 28. So we can see at 800 RPM, 
and uh, 68 uh, kPa and as we slowly start adding the advance it pulls in now this on this particular graph looks like a linear line from 8 to 28 but over here this is the same thing except uh, we've got rpm and spark advance is on the y-axis and now we've got map on z and we can see that there's a nice linear line here all the way up until around uh, this says 20 nice linear steps and then all of a sudden we lose that linear line and the spark advance is increasing now with very little increase in engine speed and we can see the blue uh, here this is manifold pressure so the darker the blue the more manifold pressure and we can see that this blue is pretty solid in color which means that there's not very much map change here so this is kind of very telling when you're looking at the information you can build the scatter plot and really see what's going on with the engine and there's all kinds of different parameters you can set another uh, tuning tool I use quite often is a histogram now normally these are colored based on hit value uh, you can change the table coloring over here on the left so if we do hit weight the darker the green the more time uh, that we sat in that information cell but for today I'd like to just uh, based on color value and what this is going to do is larger values darker red smaller values blue and we can see red is a low manifold pressure value blue is pulling more vacuum on the engine and this one's pretty telling as well we've got rpm and we've got ignition advance and so <clears throat> at eight degrees of course um, we have some erroneous information in here uh, simply because the data log uh, ran longer than the test did so we can if we look at the hit value based on hit weight anything that's in these clear white cells here is pretty much useless data there's not enough information there there's just enough information for Megalog Viewer to put a cell there and give it a value. The only cells I'm really uh, going to put any merit to are these uh, darker green cells. So this cell, this one, this one, this one here. And the yellow cells I'm not going to give very much merit to. Like this one says a hit count of 110, but here we got a hit count of almost 200. So I'm going to take a look at the the darker cells now if we follow the green cells up 8 900 and we can see that's a 2 RP a, a ignition value change of 2 we gained we're pulling 2 more kPa RPM went up 50 here's another step to 12 uh, degrees we move to 950 now we're pulling even more vacuum we take another step up here to f around 14 degrees we take a step up to a thousand then 1050 and we can see everything's nice all the way up till about 20 degrees right here at 20 degrees uh, we pulled another two inches or uh, not two inches two kPa 1100 rpm 20 degrees of timing and above this we really don't get a significant change for what we're putting in. We keep adding two degrees of timing, 22, 24, 26, but we can see we're not adding any more RPM and we're not really pulling any more vacuum. <clears throat> this is our cutoff right here. I would not, uh, I'd go to about 22 degrees maximum. I'd probably set this engine, well, I actually have this engine set to idle between uh, 14 and 16 degrees of timing most of the time. Uh, so the ignition table at idle, I actually have set to 15 degrees. And then my idle advance, as RPM starts to fall, my idle advance says, uh, 
I'm going to add one degree of timing per 100 RPM to help control uh, idle speed. And I'm going to remove one degree of timing per, per 100 RPM uh, negative RPM delta uh, to decrease idle speed. So it, it helps control the idle. And I can do that because I'm not, I'm already at a, a value where uh, removing timing is going to remove idle speed and adding timing is going to increase idle speed. If we were to set the base ignition table, say somewhere up here around 20, removing timing will definitely lower the idle speed, but adding timing is not going to help stabilize the idle at all. And that's the issue. So in part three, uh, you, I, you can see me take some data from a customer vehicle and I go through all of the different setup of closed loop idle. And then in part four, uh, I actually cover initial uh, table values and I cover um, idle advance, which is using this information to set up idle advance settings. Um, in the test number one, I used the idle valve and I swept the, I locked the timing at 16 degrees and I swept the idle valve from 30% up to 100. Uh, there is always a RPM change on that valve. I actually did a second test where I swept it from 0% to 100% and on every step there was a RPM change. So my valve closed duty is zero and my valve open duty is 100. Thank you for watching. If you like this video and don't want to miss future videos, make sure you hit the subscribe button at the bottom. If you need help with your next MegaSquirt project and you'd like tuning services or tuning classes, you can reach me at a91what at gmail.com.